Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditation, where we generally look at one or another. Lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office selection. And I thought today for Saturday we'd go ahead and take a look at St. Matthew's Gospel. We're already up to uh, chapter number 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and at the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, that ye be shall see that ye be not troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. For all these are the beginning of sorrows. They shall then deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Okay, so a little bit of end times predictions going on here. Uh, first of all, it, it starts out talking about the temple. And we know that, in fact, the temple was destroyed in the year 70 and not been rebuilt. Uh, in fact, the uh, Muslims built a, a mosque, a uh, place of worship, on top of the Temple Mount. And there's a lot of contention about the possession of that particular piece of land uh, in order to worship. The temple is no longer necessary, right? That physical place of the offering of the blood sacrifices is no longer necessary because we have one sufficient sacrifice, once offered for the sins of the world, and that is Jesus Christ. So, uh, you know, I, I, some people have, I've actually seen some of the extreme uh, groups of, of Christian sects who say things like, well, if we help these radicalized, uh, far extreme Jewish groups who want to rebuild the temple, if we help them do it, well, then that'll call God's hand and it'll have to return because there is no temple. Um, I, I think that's pretty bad theology all the way around, both ends. However, uh, Jesus then goes on to say that they, <laughs> they extrapolate that into end times questions. And you know, the reality is, is that all this stuff has continued to happen, right? People will be deceived. Some will come in the name of Jesus and they'll deceive people, right? And lots of folks have done that in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and you hear wars and rumors of wars. We, we still have wars. Uh, and, you know, these things will happen. And then, you know, this is the beginnings of sorrows because human beings are still sinful in so many ways, inside and outside of the church, right? But then he turns it and makes it even more personal. He said, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, right? And many shall be offended. False prophets rise and deceive many. Oh, it's not, it doesn't sound like good news, does it? But the reality is that sin is sin and that unless we acknowledge our sin and continue to confess our faults and throw ourselves before the throne of God and submit to his will, things will get worse, not better. And it is the work of the church to continue to remind the world of the need for Jesus Christ, for his forgiveness through that confession of sins. Because in the end, it's not about how well you do it. It's not the doing. It is that in the end, you're still here in the body of Christ. And you're still working towards your salvation that Jesus has already accomplished for it. He's accomplished the work. You're working towards it right, by keeping the teachings of Jesus Christ. But, as he says, but those who endure to the end, by who are found faithful, the same shall be saved. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what's going on around us, whether it be wars or disagreements or people hating you or trying to kill you for as much as you love Jesus, it's all still part of the good news as long as we continue to be faithful. Today Saturday. Again, no public worship uh, at St. John's on Saturdays uh, right now, unless we have a special event. Uh, and so we are getting ready for worship tomorrow at St. John's. And God willing, 
I'll actually be there this week, right? I was I actually had one week off and then was sick last week and it was in, I was in the hospital, I wasn't able to lead worship and God willing, I will be standing at the altar and leading worship uh, as we all glorify God together and receive him in the Blessed Sacrament. So I do hope that you're planning to be with us. 7.30 morning prayer, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock Holy Communion or 5.30 evening prayer with Holy Communion. And I do hope that you will have a Saturday that is full of blessings. Say your prayers and I'll see you in church.